Welcome my fellow book addicts, Megan here, and time for another book review. Today, I am finally getting back to the Woman of the Otherworld series with Waking the Witch by Kelly Armstrong. <coughs> so, this is book 10 in the series, and in this book, we are focusing on Savannah, which I was really excited for. Like, since Savannah has been introduced, in book 2, we have gotten, like, you know, mentions of her, we've seen bits and pieces of her throughout the other books. So in a way, we've basically seen Savannah grow up into a young woman. So, you know, I felt that kind of made a difference. And I was really looking forward to, like, seeing her point of view and, like, get into her head, so to speak. So, yes, I was very excited. Give a little preface, because, yeah. Paige and Lucas had gotten married, and they're off on a little vacation, and Savannah's kind of holding down the fort at their little law firm, where she, Adam... Paige and Lucas all work together, where they work on cases, more or less, you know, supernatural cases or cases they think involve supernaturals. And, you know, one, one of her first days, chilling out, on the job, you know, you know, determined to show that she is a mature adult and she can do this. She actually has the opportunity to take on this case. A case where she is actually alone. Since, you know, she started helping out with Lucas and Paige, she's done paperwork, research, legwork. She's assisted on a few cases, but she's never had one on her own because Paige and Lucas didn't necessarily feel she was ready for it. And now she's, you know, determined to prove them wrong. So this case is, you know, the murder of a few humans, supposedly. There was two murders beforehand, like the previous year, and then there's recently another one. And based on some pictures that she has shown by this guy, Jesse, who brought the case to her attention. And Jesse is a half-demon, a telekinetic half-demon. And he wants some help on this case because he can't really jump into it right away because he's helping out some other woman with a case. So he can't really be two places at once. So Savannah is, you know, happy to volunteer. And one, the thing that really grabbed their attention is in the most recent murder, there are signs of this being, like, some sort of, like, cult, satanic ritual thing. And, you know, this is the kind of thing that they need to look into. Sure, it's very likely going to be some hum bogus human attempt at doing something paranormal. But, you know, every once in a while, something like that does pop up. But there is some actual truth behind it, so they gotta look into it anyway, just to be safe. And another thing that really sets this town apart is it's this tiny, tiny little thing, and not really a law crime there, or not a law serious crime, especially murder. So, you know, it, it's something that's really out of the blue. So yeah, Savannah goes down, you know, she lets Adam know what's up, and he's gonna join her later on. So basically, this whole book is her trying to solve these murders and prove that she is a capable young woman and can handle her own cases. So yes, without further ado, I'm going to go into a spoilery bit. So if you don't want to be spoiled, I suggest you click away now and come back after you read the book. So when Savannah gets to this town, she realizes that there is actually a human detective in on this case too. And he has a personal connection to this case. His half-sister was the most recent murder, and he wants to find out what the hell happens on his own. So Savannah and him are kind of butting heads a little bit for a while, though they do kind of semi-team up. Jesse's periodically checking up on Savannah, and makes a few appearances to help her out too. And a simple, you know, case, if you can call this simple, quickly becomes complicated, Savannah meets Kayla, who is the daughter of one of the two previous victims. The two women who were murdered the year before were best friends, and they weren't in the best crowd. And a lot of people assumed that it was Kayla's mother, whose name is Ginny, by the way. They feel that it was her boyfriend, who is like this big hot shot in town, this wealthy kid who thinks he's untouchable. And that's who the police chief thinks did it too. They just don't have the proof to pin it on him. So he's like prime suspect number one. Prime suspect number two is this old guy. He set up this kind of weird commune thing near town and, you know, a lot of townspeople are kind of creeped out and gossip about him because, he, you know, he's this old guy and most of the people who live at this commune are young girls who have issues and are trying to get help. 
So you got Savannah doing a lot of poking around. The wife of prime suspect number one, Cody, is freaked out at Savannah. Is totally freaked out because, oh my god, here's these two detective people trying to pin this crime on her husband. Not that she really gives a crap about her husband, she just cares about her status. And, you know, her children, who are all daughters. We actually find out that she is a witch. And things get intense really fast. The human detective, Michael, who has been helping out with Savannah, he actually gets murdered during this investigation. And whoever murdered him tries to pin it on her, actually. Though she's quickly, you know, proven innocent because there's evidence proving that. And Savannah takes this blow pretty hard because she was actually starting to like this guy. But she pushes on, she needs to finish this case, and yet another death happens. The, the witch, Tiffany, she supposedly kills herself. It screams set up to Adam, who is there, as well as Savannah. It just doesn't seem to fit. So, you know, there's another murder, and eventually Savannah gets enough pieces to put together what happened. Like, who killed Brandy and Tiffany. She's not quite sure who killed Claire, who is this third girl. Though she does piece it together. She pieces together that um, Kayla's grandmother, Paula, is the one who killed Ginny and her friend Brandy. It was totally by accident. Apparently, Cody wanted to break things off with Ginny because he used the excuse because she has a kid. And... And yes, Cody is that much of a douchebag. He is married, yet he has this trashy girlfriend on the side. But no, um, and Brandy wanted Ginny and Cody to still be together because Cody provided them with booze and alcohol. Booze and drugs. Booze and alcohol, the same thing, Megan. And, you know, without that, like, constant supply, you know, they're miserable. So she was trying to talk Ginny into basically killing Kayla and staging it to look like some creepy pedophile did it. Paula finds out and one of the girls had a gun and she was trying to wrestle the gun away from her so you know she could keep Kayla safe and in the struggle the gun went off and killed both of the girls. So Paula freaks the hell out and she calls the guy up in the commune who we actually find out even is Ginny's biological father and he helps, you know, set things up to make it look like it was some crazy murderer and not Paula. And when Santa Anna finds this out, she, you know, confronts Paula to, you know, get the details. And, you know, she's like, I'm not, I'm not going to turn you in. That's not my case. My case is to find out who killed Claire Kennedy. That and Savannah knows if she squeals on Paula, she's going to be, you know, arrested and... Poor Kayla is going to be taken away and put into the system. So that's one mystery solved. And in this epic conclusion, we find out that Jesse is really Leah from all the way back in the beginning of the series, that really super-powered telekinetic demon. She is possessing poor Jesse and has been since the beginning of the book. He, She staged Claire Kennedy's death to kind of get Savannah's interest and to get her to this little town because apparently she wants to use Savannah as leverage against Eve because when Leah died she was locked away in this nasty little hell dimension she managed to bust free and now Eve is after her she doesn't like this she wants to you know stay alive so she's planning to use Savannah as leverage to keep her freedom and also, Leah's the one who killed Michael, so that's like, ouch. And, you know, Savannah manages to help her mother trap Leah again. But sadly, Leah had thought of this. In case something happened to her, she had a package sent to the police detailing Paula's role in Ginny and Brandy's death. So, Basically, what Savannah was trying to avoid happened. Paul is arrested, and poor Kayla is taken away. And she's eaten up by guilt by this. Like, really eaten up. And we also find out, as like another little twist, you know, before the very end, 
Tiffany's death was actually supposedly done by this witch hunter. You know, witch hunters are a thing of myths in this world, but turns out they're not. There's some truth to it. And witch hunter killed Tiffany and is now after Savannah. Which, you know, wouldn't be too bad because she's a super powerful spellcaster, but in her grief, at the end of the book, Savannah kind of makes a little plea. Savannah can't help but think, God, I would give, go as far as give up my powers if I could fix even one wrong in all of this. Because, you know, she can't, if she didn't come to this little town, so many deaths would have been avoided. Michael's, Tiffany, well, Tiffany's probably not so much, but Cody died, a poor police officer, security guard died, a homeless guy died, Kayla and Paula were separated. So much stuff happened because she was brought there, because she showed up there. And there's only one of these things that she can really fix, and that's reuniting Paula and Kayla. And she basically is like, God, if I can even fix that one thing, that one little thing, I would give up my powers. And, you know, it looks like some higher being took her up on that offer. And, you know, she fell asleep and took a nap. And when she tried to use her spells when she woke up, she couldn't. Her magic was completely gone. So I have a feeling the next book is going to involve a lot more of that. And, like, why she lost her powers, how she lost her powers, if she didn't lose them in vain or not. And things are going to get really intense. The next two books, the last two books in this series, not including, you know, novellas and all that. So, you know, things are going to get... Whoa, that's not full. Things are going to get really, really intense, and I am so freaking excited for it. So, yes, I love this installment. This was awesome, and I totally look forward to reading Spellbound next. So, yeah, that's really it for this book review, and I hope to see you guys next time. Keep on reading my fellow book addicts, keep on reading.